going to start off with a few introductions. I've got uh, Jason Quinn here from TrueMed. Uh, I've got uh, Paul Mutter from BGC. Uh, and uh, last but not least, Brett Schechterman from S&P Global. Uh, we're going to kick off just uh, quick introductions. Uh, we can start with you, Jason, and then just run down the line. Yeah, Jason Quinn, um, Chief Product Officer at TrueMid. Prior to being at a trading venue, I spent many years um, trading myself, both on the sell side and the buy side. So it's been about seven plus years now at TrueMid uh, in the fine world of fintech, and happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, Paul Mutter, uh, I am a general manager of five uh, financial technology businesses within the Fenix umbrella of BGC, and I also run our global sales organization. And Brett Schechterman, I am the global head of Thinkfolio and uh, head of strategy for front office at S&P Global, previously IHS Market. Um, been in the space for north of 20 years, uh, most recently on the vendor side, but I spent three quarters of my career uh, on the buy side supporting uh, PMs, traders, research analysts, and the decision support process. Great. I, I realized I didn't tell people who I was. I'm, I'm Chuck Dorr. Uh, I'm the CIO at OpenFin, uh, one of the, the co-founders here. Um, uh, when we were prepping for this panel, uh, I was reminded uh, that, that uh, two of our panelists here actually built some of the earliest uh, interoperability, like certainly third parties interoping, you know, sort of across vendor boundaries. Uh, one, of those early, uh, one of those early integrations was uh, Alpha and TrueMid. Uh, really cool stuff. Uh, Jason was just telling me it's still alive. Um, so we, we've got the right people here uh, to, to really dig into this. Um, but first, you know, maybe, maybe let's take a step back uh, and, uh, you know, think a little bit about some of the user journey, some of the challenges that our users have to go through um, a, a, around, around their workflows. Maybe, uh, maybe, Brett, I'll throw it to you and then we can... We yeah, absolutely. Um, or we could talk about developer recruitment strategy. I like Mozzie and Lenny's approach. We're <laughs> hiring, by the way. So those Every, of you who are listening, hiring. Everyone's hiring. we're hiring. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of you know, user workflows, I mean, I think there's been so much, especially in this community, there's been so much heavily focused on, on the execution space um, and trading workflows, the trading desktop, whereas you know, where our products um, that I look after. I'm thinking about multiple personas in the front office, specifically portfolio managers, traders, certainly, you know, research plays a role, quants, and then compliance, and, and all of that coming together, and being able to bring those cross-functional users together in a much more seamless experience that's far more productive. Um, generally, because we've been so focused in this ecosystem and in this, in our industry on trading, I think PMs don't necessarily get as much airtime, whereas I'm, we're trying to think about how we can really differentiate about how much goes into the pre-trade decision support process, how many tools, um, how much data, um, how much needs to be consumed between market intel, third-party content, and proprietary apps in terms of thinking through all that in the journey and then how PMs communicate and want to implement their ideas to portfolios with the trading desk. So just thinking about how, how many things can go wrong or awry or might take too many mouse clicks to get done, cost you basis points, cost you time to market. That's what we're always we're thinking about as we modernize and go through our journey is you know, how do we, from a user journey perspective, really enable the PMs and whether they're working in the office or whether they're working at home, whether on, they're on the road, is how do they optimize that screen space in their decision support process, and how can they leverage what we're all doing here as part of this ecosystem to unlock those synergies in a really productive way? And I think you can't like focus on one user at a time, but that's kind of what we're thinking through Chuck as we're as we're going through our modernization effort. Yeah, so it's, it, I mean, it's efficiency. It's all yeah. it's reducing operational risk, yeah. right? Uh, keeping people focused. Yeah. Uh, Paul, maybe just moving sa same question on to you, like just. You know, how are you thinking about these challenges? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> if you think about uh, the Lucera Loom Alpha product, uh, our core competency is pre-trade analytics, and our customer base is the buy side. And so that customer base is faced with um, 
limited budgets, limited technology staff, um, but a tremendous desire to benefit from uh, the work we do. And so uh, we'll do our demo, we'll, we'll uh, present our product, and then the customer will say, well, great, I need your product in my native environment. And for some of our customers, some of the uh, largest asset managers in the world, they'll use our uh, user interface, uh, will be on their desktop, that's the place they uh, use our product. But for many others, they'll say, my, my OMS is Thinkfolio, and it's the best OMS in the world, and I need to uh, have your product delivered through that interface. And so that's where we get to this issue of interoperability, obviously a buzzword of the evening, and we need to quickly come up with ways where we can you know, widgetize our technology, our core competency, and get it in the place where our clients are using it. Similarly, uh, they might say, well, you know, I'm going to use the uh, execution venues at TrueMid, and, uh, but I would like to benefit from your pre-trade analytics, and there again, um, we need to make sure we have a way to interact, and um, you're right, by the way, uh, Chuck, our predecessor company, Algamy, now Lucera Lumalpha, was an early adopter of OpenFin and the FDC3 toolkit um, since then, and uh, that enabled us to be able to use that technology together with TrueMid to uh, stage orders to the True, TrueMid uh, desktop application. It's still running, right? Still it's still running. running. <laughs> I love it. Uh, uh, do, you want, do you want to talk about challenges, or do you want to move on to the next phase? What do you think, Jason? No, the, the only thing I wanted to add to that, which I, you know, just listening to all the panels tonight, the, one of the big differences in, I think, uh, you know, us up here, the client base is not an internal client, client base. Um, and in many cases, they're um, risking millions of dollars. You know, in the case of our, our trading platform, obviously, they're committing capital to do trades. And so, um, there is a higher level, uh, there's a higher bar to when you have, um, you know, you're, you're trying to get someone over the hump to some type of interoperability. They need to trust that that's going to function reliably. Um, and that is a challenge because, um, and that's one of the reasons why they like to stay in their native system. And so we have to deal with that. And I think going into the next question, we'll touch on why some of the you know, the widgetizing or interoperability elements uh, can be important uh, to continue to innovate on trading protocols themselves. Yeah, so let's just continue into that with uh, the co-opetition, collaboration, like, you know, what are, what, you know, you made a great point around, you know, uh, landing on external desktops, right? The, the kinds of workflows that you're participating in, you don't control uh, the things that are happening before people use your application, you don't control the things necessarily that are happening after people use your application. Uh, and and you need to you know you need to play in that environment really well, um, you know when it comes to coopetition collaboration, people are choosing best of breed components. Like how how does that how does that work with Truman? Yeah, so a couple things I want to just touch on with that and plug some things we we've done with uh, with S and P and Market is we have some of their data piping directly into our platform, um, in the spirit of aggregating pre trade information, which is really important again within the space that we operate in. Um, but it's all, at the end of the day, it's all about workflow. And the workflow for a trader, um, it starts at the pre-trade. Um, you know, aggregating data, having confidence in the decision and what they want to buy or what they want to sell, what they're supposed to buy or sell, which comes from their OMS, and maybe that's where they're operating. Hopefully, they, they end up on TrueMid. Um, but some of the data that we pipe in from market is to... Um, to help enable those traders make those decisions more efficiently. Um, but the challenge, especially when you're talking about, um, and I don't want to say corporate bonds or complex instruments, they just happen to be more complex um, than equities, and um, they require more interaction. And so innovation and trading protocols, it is a challenge um, in that you need to be able to design these interactions digitally, and it's very difficult to replicate that. So collaborating, uh, co-opetition, however we want to define it, um, it's really important to take what we specialize in and deliver it within a system to give you the best access. At the end of the day, it's all about workflow, and that's how we, for common clients, deliver the best experience. That makes sense. Uh, there were some S&P data shout-outs there. 
Uh, Brett, do you want to jump on that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I was loud. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, you know, we have we sit in a unique space because I think we, being a, a large provider of content, and being able to also build workflows is kind of really what gets me excited about our potential moving forward. Right. So, we had a whole bunch of data as market. We have a whole lot more data now as S and P. And so when we think about unlocking synergies that we can for that front office audience through our own kit, but also working with our partners, because in a very similar way that we've done with TrueMid, we've also done it with Paul and team, right? To they're pulling, aggregating everything that's going on on a pre-trade basis across electronic and voice markets, runs from your dealer community. And then on top of it, they also have our, our live pricing. Right? They have our levels, they have our liquidity scores, they have context. So you just have a much rounder and richer set of content to make your decisions, to Jason's point. And I think that's huge you know, in terms of what content we can provide downstream. But again, going back to the Thinkfolio user, it's a matter of you know, we want to be as open as possible. I think you've even seen a lot of the closed ecosystems and sort of front to back providers that have been there are making very public announcements about opening up their kits because they recognize that there's demand for new providers, new content, and people need to be a lot more flexible with how you deploy, right? Because they're gonna, they want that choice across the life cycle. And I think that demand and the rate of change in FinTech and the new innovation that's coming, you just need to stay open and you need to have good partners to make it work. So whether we're sending data to Jason or when we integrate Paul's product, it's here's a thing, folio blotter, I want to see my list of orders. I click on it and dynamically, real time, I see everything that's going on in that security and I see an aggregation analysis that shows me everything that's going on in the ticker, two sides in the market and what depth I have. I mean, that, that just unlocks a totally different efficiency that people haven't had previously. I, I would just add that, you know, uh our interaction with um, Brett and his team actually started with um, our role as an, an aggregator, and we were a consumer of their data sets, um, developed a relationship, and then quickly uh, realized that our uh, overlapping customer base, our common customer base, uh, had the need and desire to uh, take what we were doing uh, within their uh, Thinkfolio product, and so we quickly realized there was an opportunity. And I think that, uh, what we've learned is it's, it's great to have the technology side of it, and of course, OpenFin and everything uh, related to that is critical, but then you also have to come up with a construct that makes the paperwork and the commercials relevant for the client and simple. So I would, I would just simply say that's been an important part of our process. We continue to work on that with our partners, um, but making that streamlined is critical. That's great. Uh, and then, and then pressing along here, Jason, uh, you know, with workflows and interop, like, what do you get to achieve with that, right? When you're, you know, when you're in this co-mingled desktop, people are picking best of breed components. TrueMid's one of those components. What do you get to achieve? I mean, as a as a as a trading venue, our, one of our goals is to be. Um, obviously have a large network of users because um, you know trading venues by definition are network they're network platforms the bigger and larger and more uh, engaged the network is the more liquidity there is in the platform uh, engagement comes uh, even more with integration but with integration historically the way uh, you would typically integrate uh, with a client you sort of start to lose control of those interactions that I described before. Terrifies me because I, uh, I think we specialize in delivering streamlined interactions that make accessing our protocols very easy and intuitive. And so I'm torn on whether or not I want to be more integrated or maintain control of the interactions that I can deliver on a UI, which is going to continue to be important um, in, the, in the marketplace that we operate in. So what's really nice about um, the concepts that we're talking about here is that maybe there's an answer that's in between where I can continue to do what we, what we do well um, and still be very well integrated with the client and we all win. Um, and I think that's a really nice kind of outlook for being integrated but still being able to um, you know, harness the power of 
um, real creativity and innovation around interactions, um, which in the end just unlocks more liquidity for the markets. And again, that's the business we operate in, so that's what's important to us. Yeah, certainly in innovating trading protocols while you're waiting for standards to evolve is, uh, is a loser's game. <laughs> um, Paul, you've got to have some thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it comes back to core competencies. Listening to Jason uh, talk about it, like we at Lucera Loom Alpha, we don't want to be in the venue space. We're not there to um, come up with trading protocols. Uh, what, what we can do is take our um, skill set, our analytics, our um, customer eyes on screen and direct them to the best in class, um, in the case of execution, trading venues. And so um, we might have the customer that we can direct toward a true mid, um, or there we might have the analytics that direct a customer to know the best liquidity and the best way to trade that security is on the TrueMid platform. Right. And, and Brett, you know, again, when, when, you, when you think about these, uh, the, the interoperability, like, what are some of the key points that, um, you know, the, from, from an experience standpoint that you're looking to hit with your, you know, with your end users? Like, we're trying to digitize interactions, we're trying to do a whole bunch of things. Yeah, I think, I think can you, is there depth to the insights to where you don't have to work outside the app to get things done and to progress them, right? You want to have an app or a widget or an interaction like, you know, in the case of, hey, I want to evaluate the liquidity of my investable universe. I want to be able to interact with Paul's app and get back that context where I don't have to go leave into a, go into a spreadsheet, right, and then call my, my, my dealing desk. I basically want to be able to work very seamlessly, right, you know, and whether it's FTC3, another standard, or a deeper integration, it's a matter of like making sure that you get maximum utility out of the integrations and that you don't have superfluous workflows or inefficiencies happening outside. It's fewest mouse clicks, enriches my process, enhances my decision support framework, and I can do it and I can interact with my coworkers in a much better way. So I think it's, that's got to enter in and, and a few folks on my product team are here. Um, but they're constantly thinking about those things. It's like, how do we maximize, you know, what we're calling back to, the, to that desktop and to that experience? And, you know, be, at the end of the day, I think, to your point on cost and commercials, well, everyone's focused on, especially because we're dealing heavily with fixed income investors, it's a basis point business. Everyone, every head of dealing is focused on not spending, but making sure they get incremental productivity. They're trying to get more efficiency. So we need to do things in a smart way, workflow-wise, but also from a commercial context with our partners. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna push us hard uh, into the widgets topic now, right? Because we, yeah. we, heard, we heard some hints of it in uh, what we were talking about here. It's kind of bigger, it, it's a bigger topic than interop uh, as, a, as a baseline, right? But you know, when you have an interoperable desktop, you can start to do this sort of, uh, this best of both breeds kind of an approach where you get, to, you get to remain on the desktop, you get to, you know, your, your customers getting the data that they need to drive their processes. You've got automation. Paul, you want, you want to maybe talk a little bit about widgetization and, and kind of what that means in your world? Yeah, happy to. I mean, uh, Thinkfolio is a great example. Uh, uh, we have a uh, market depth widget, which gives the uh, buy side customer um, a real-time snapshot view into what is the liquidity available in a particular instrument and ultimately gives them the, the uh, knowledge of where they should direct that inquiry. Um, but with Thinkfolio, we needed a way to take that simple tool, which normally would be accessed through our GUI, through our interface, um, and embed it in the Thinkfolio product. And we're super excited. At anyone that's in the market for an OMS, you should check out Brett's like next gen product. It's super, super cool. Um, but it's like instant, seamless, widget comes up and, and Brett can talk more about it. But it's it's uh, it's our core skill set right there in Thinkfolio. Um, and we view it as just the beginning. We're working on a whole set of additional integrations, um, which we think will make uh, a great addition to Thinkfolio and will help us uh, with our mutual customers. Yeah, I mean, I, I 
couldn't have said it better. I think it's a matter of, you know, there's things that we've luckily been able to do in our existing app. And so we've been able to deliver kind of a min viable to our legacy tools, which is kind of WinForms based. We're not even in HTML5, but we're, we're pushing in that direction. And that's going to unlock a whole bunch of other capabilities. And to Paul's point, his team is constantly thinking about adding new business intelligence around scoring venues, scoring dealers, giving you a lot more intel that you can leverage and integrate to your TCA and best X framework. Just a lot of great stuff that I think multiple personas working together on the desk would never have had access to intraday. It's stuff that they get via reports once a quarter, right? This stuff is going to be at their fingertips, which is game changing. Jason, I know you kind of already talked about widgets. No, I was actually going to say something for Brett, which is I sort of feel for the OMS provider in some ways because if you're multi-asset class, you're dealing with all these intricacies. We need it. And so um, I think the widget is, is, is great for you because otherwise, I mean, you're going to have to shout louder about needing to hire developers. So if you want to do that now. We're hiring, by the way. All so right. I got that out again. We're, uh, we're, we're running down on time here, but I do want to give everyone a, a, a chance to kind of hit, uh, you know, hit, a, hit a, a, a recommendation around workflow. Uh, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick off with, uh, you know, the composed desktop that, uh, you know, vendors uh, end up on, right? Uh, you know, it's critically important to be thinking about what's happening before, during, and after uh, your application or your widget's usage. I think we've got to really be careful uh, and, and think hard about what that is and know that we're landing in an environment that, you know, is a dynamic environment. Um, we'll toss it down to Brett and just run this way. Yeah, I mean, I, recommendations are, I just think, like, communities like this, you know, and getting more minds, more collective intelligence involved to solve some of these industry challenges is really what's needed. And whether we're talking about standards, or we're talking about the fact that there's multiple people on stage solving for one thing or a few things that they know they want to be particularly best in. And the fact that, to, the, to Jason's OMS point, our world is so broad, it's cross-asset, it's different user personas, it can get really complex. Um, so the fact that we know that we can focus on our core competencies and rely on partners throughout the ecosystem that working with good partners drives us. It pushes us, we learn, they learn, and we do better on behalf of the users at the end of the day. So I think this community coming together in you know, these types of events and then having action items come out of this where more people agree to work together is gonna to benefit the industry at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree, Brett, completely. I, I, I would say um, our super users of the Lucera Loom Alpha product, they use our GUI. Um, they, uh, that's their native environment. They're spending a lot of time with us there. Um, and even two years ago, that's absolutely how we thought about uh, our product. The reality has been, as the customer uh, has evolved, they're asking us for our product in other places. And so it's forced us into these conversations, which have been fantastic. Um, and uh, basically said to us, look, there's going to be some subset of our customer bases that uh, interface with us that way, but others that need us to uh, compartmentalize, just, again, stick to what we do best, right? In our case, pre trend analytics. Um, but then find ways to cooperate and interface, do it seamlessly, easily. Uh, and so it's, a, it's kind of a winning, it's a winning combination, but it's more a requirement of the customer base today versus just a few years, years ago. Awesome, bring us home, Jason. All right, I'll, do, I'll be fast. Um, I think the openness uh, and having an open mind is, is, is actually one of the things that's been most enlightening about coming from the traditional um, sell side in particular to the fintech world at a venue like Trumid. Um, and I want to continue to think in ways that perhaps um, you, know, you wouldn't think if you were um, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And I think some really cool things are going to happen as a result of that. And um, at the end of the day, focusing on workflow is the key. If you can, if you can make things easier for whoever you're serving, um, and keep an open mind and ways to do that, uh, everyone wins. How about that? Focus on the user, love it. 
Love it. Uh, Brett, Paul, Jason, thank you so much. Uh, great conversation. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chuck. Thank I've, you. I've never, I've always like wanted to come on stage to GNR. So thank you guys for <laughs> giving me that opportunity. Welcome to the jungle, baby. So, yeah, welcome to the jungle.